This is the first AFN General Assembly since electing a new national chief, and there are a lot of big issues on the agenda. Olivia Stefanovic joins us live from Montreal. Olivia, good morning. What can we expect from this first day of the Assembly? Well, Chris, we are expected to hear this morning from Cindy Woodhouse Nipanak the first time as National Chief of the Assembly of First Nations. Now, Woodhouse Nipanak is no stranger to these meetings. She was previously the Regional Chief for Manitoba for the AFN, so she knows quite well how this all operates. However, we haven't seen her in this leadership role yet and how she plans to set the tone with chiefs and what her priorities are. We haven't seen her do that yet in this capacity in her new role. Now, she has been traveling the country since she was elected last December. This is the first time we will hear from her directly. And I had a chance to catch up with her yesterday, just before this assembly kicked off. And I had the chance to ask her directly what she plans to tell chiefs. Have a listen. I think there's a lot to talk about. Uh, of course, there's policing and justice and uh, so many you know, economic development that we have across this country. I think our this country also needs to hear that we can't be left out when it comes to economic reconciliation anymore. I know that that's a big topic, but I think that it's one that needs to be had, and as well as child, child welfare. Now, Woodhouse Nipanak has big agenda. She has lots of priorities that she wants to discuss over the next three days here in Montreal. However, there are challenges that she will come across, Chris, and they include lingering issues that remain here at the AFN. In particular, just yesterday, we received a press release from the former National Chief's brother, Bruce Archibald. He says he plans to come to this assembly this week in Montreal and address issues about how the AFN treats women. Now, at the last summer assembly, which took place in Halifax last year, there was a report that was issued on the AFN floor that found that there was widespread harassment at the AFN and women in particular were with mistreated. So uh, Bruce Archibald, Roseanne Archibald's brother, who is a chief from Northern Ontario, he says that he plans to bring this issue up directly on the AFN floor and he says he also plans to speak out against the treatment of his sister Roseanne Archibald who was booted from the AFN from the top job last year following a, an external workplace investigation that found she bullied and Harris staff. Now, Roseanne Archibald, for her part, she denies these allegations, and she's now suing her former employer, the Assembly of First Nations, for $5 million for defamation. And Olivia, this meeting is happening as the Canadian political landscape is, is shifting as well. So how does that factor into this week's meeting? Well, Chris, it's a big factor. On top of internal issues that the AFN needs to sort out, it also has the broader issue of working with the next government, whoever that may be, to, to, to start work, you know, looking forward to. Now, when we look at the national polls, the Liberals are trailing behind the Conservatives, and AFN chiefs are aware of this. And because it is a national advocacy organization, it needs to work with whoever forms the next government, whoever is in, in charge, whether it be Liberals, Conservatives, NDP. So Woodhouse Nipanak, as national chief, she says she's already been making reaching out to the parties, making inroads with them. And for the first time this, at, the, at an assembly, we are expected to hear from the Conservative leader, Pierre Polyev, directly. He is expected to address the chiefs for the first time as a Conservative leader and take questions. Now, we haven't seen Polyev do this before. In the past, he sent a recorded message. So it will be interesting to watch how he is received by AFN chiefs. Uh, in the past, uh, he, the former um, AF, uh, Conservative leader, Andrew Scheer, he was booed at the Assembly of First Nations, Chris. All right, Olivia, thank you so much for that.